well then, it's a shame. I, I took the slide out, so we don't, I don't have the text of the letter anymore. But do you think that that letter, ostensibly written, like that sort of open letter to Virginia, right? But really, I think you're right, to parents. Um, d you don't read the letter as sort of encouraging a sense of faith, as committing to it? Well, I think it's encouraging a sense of, no, yeah. I, I, I actually read it as sort of a depressing letter. Yeah. That, yeah, sorry, you know, sadly, there is no Santa Claus, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> well, that that, that don't really, not. what it's about don't. is how you act. What, what, what did you do when you were in the movie theater watching Peter Pan and the children were told that yeah. they needed to believe in Tinkerbell? Yeah. <laughs> How did you respond to that? I actually love that, like the Tinkerbell analogy, yeah. right? That if you believe in Santa, but, but the editor is not saying that if you believe hard enough, a figure will materialize in the North Pole. Right. But my reading of the letter is that there's an encouragement of belief because faith has intrinsic value. Right, whether or not there is a literal guy in the North Pole running a sweatshop, um, <laughs> that the, um, yeah. the commitment to faith has intrinsic reward. But, but faith in what? Yeah, so I think it's your religious connection, right? I mean, it's just like faith as if even faith in humanity. Yeah, I, I see, I see what you're saying. 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 I see this was the first time that it popped in my head that, oh yeah, this is, this is post-origin of species. Yeah. This is when lots of people were thinking hard about what are we going to do with certain kinds of traditional beliefs in light of these findings. Right. And I know that one way of squaring that circle was to really reinterpret religious belief in such a way that it just like extracted any kind of content about physical things in the world. Right. Although, at the, when Origin of Species came out uh, in, um, at the t when Origin of Species came out, America was in involved in the Civil War, so it didn't have any immediate impact. We were busy. But um, after the Civil War, there were lots of Christian ministers who argued that believing in uh, evolutionary uh, theology did not inherently undermine their Christian beliefs. And so it's not until um, later in the 20th century where people begin to talk about you know, either you believe in evolution or you believe in, uh, uh, you know, the creation of the world in six days or something like that. So it's not, it's, it's not immediately apparent to people that um, you have to pick one or the other, right? It doesn't immediately cause this enormous wave of atheism uh, at the time. Well, but I'm not sure. I, I read the Virginia letter atheism. Yeah. That is really interesting. I'll go back and reread re it a few more times and get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> other thoughts or questions? Yeah. You mean why does this is, was this popular? Why is there a belief in encouragement of belief in Santa Claus at all? Well, I mean, if, 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 if people created the idea of Santa Claus, uh -huh. then easily just made up these stories about God existing. I and that can be the atheist argument. There isn't really God, it's just this thing to make up what she said, to make us kind to each other, the <laughs> good humanity. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that that's. Um, uh, I want to argue that there's, that there's an aspect of belief in Santa Claus that sort of maintains this kind of commitment to faith, right? That it's a, it's a childlike and simplified version of believing in something, but that it is intended to ultimately um, uh, begin to establish what will then be a deeper sense of faith later. And in those two books that I uh, referenced, the one from 1820 and 1880, both tie Jesus and Santa and belief in these things very closely to um, explicitly Christian ideas, right? Christian ideas about Judgment Day, uh, Christian ideas um, about uh, faith as something uh, uh, that strengthens your connection to God. Um, but that is, those are 19th century examples. And so I'm not sure if this, if this ends with the Virginia letter. <laughs> There's an arc there that you could say that's the end of that, that moment, right? And that the 20th century is just kind of taken over by consumerism. I'm not sure. I do know that consumerism is part of what has maintained the popularity of Christmas, both as a kind of popular consumer holiday and as a religious holiday, right? That, I, that uh, clearly Puritans were not able to um, 
establish this time of year as having anything to do with piety or sacredness or reverence, um, and that it took this kind of combination of commercial culture uh, and, uh, and uh, religious mythology about, um, you know, about um, Jesus and about Santa uh, and about childhood that combined in order to create this kind of popular uh, uh, time of the year. Well, thank you. I think it is time for us to wrap up. Uh, you might, will you have time just to speak? I would be happy to do that, yeah. But uh, on behalf of the College of Waters and Science, thank you for showing up. And do remember the Wolf Talk in February.